In Baghdad these days, several neighborhoods are particularly tense and the police patrol with caution. They're enclaves where Sunnis live, in a city that not long ago lived through a nightmare of sectarian violence and where now the fear is that it could happen again. Well, we can't get into Ambar and Fallujah because they're in a state of open revolt. But this part of Baghdad, it's called Dura, is a particularly interesting place now to look at the tension with the Sunni community. This is where Al-Qaeda flooded into the outskirts of the city in 2006 and declared this a liberated zone. And that sparked a huge fight. The first Newsnight film in Dura was made seven years ago. When violence was at its height, the Americans sent troops into the market to turn the situation around and they came under constant attack. It's time to rock and roll. To reach Dura, you cross the Tigris, south of central Baghdad. These days, the Americans are long gone and the area is surrounded with police checkpoints. And since Shiites dominate the force, that means many Sunnis feel besieged. The atmosphere of normality that took years to achieve is now threatened. Dura is famous for its sprawling markets. You can buy everything from river carp to spices, dresses, or even televisions. The great metric here for the Americans of their success always was how many shops were opening. In the darkest moment of what was happening in 2006, it went down to a couple of dozen. Then they got it up to a few hundred. And a year ago, there were said to be 20,000 stallholders in this market. It really is one of the biggest in Baghdad. But now, as a result of what's happened in the last few months, some of them have started getting into financial trouble again, and some of the stalls have closed. It was here, on Christmas Day, that a series of bombs killed 26 people and shattered the peace. Were the bombs aimed at local Christians, or the Sunnis who are Dura's majority, or simply at the government nobody knew? But they traumatised this community. There were wounded and injured people. I don't remember how many wounded and lots of martyrs. There were dead shopkeepers. There was Jasim and his son Abu Hisham, God have mercy on them. Ghassan and his mother who was passing by, God have mercy on them. Sayed al -Itawi. I came across the bodies of about 10 from my area. We really hope it will get better. The situation generally in Baghdad is now getting worse because these incidents, carried out by some gangs in Ambar province and others, are felt in Baghdad. We're able to drop in on old friends, people we met making our three previous Dura films, like architect Tarek Al Hazraji. We are pretty nice. I will not go to a very congested area with people because I don't know who, when the bomb is going to start. You can pay $100 to somebody to plant one of these bombs for you and he'll be very pleased to go and spend it on drinks or on other things. They don't care. The Iraqi citizen or the Iraqi person has no value. If he lives or dies, they lost that value. And we don't have the, uh, the sense of citizenship as you have uh, in the UK or you have it in Europe. Dura today is a more prosperous place than when the Americans were here. So what, so what? They started the turnaround and the Iraqi government consolidated it. So why are things going wrong now? Measures that brought peace have been reversed. Tell them very soon the SOI will be paid by the National Police and not the US at all. On previous visits, 
we saw how the Americans formed a Sunni militia, the Awakening or Sahwa forces. Hundreds signed up for it, many of them former insurgents. They put walls in to separate Dura from neighbouring Shiite communities too. They got on top of Al-Qaeda, but never fully killed it off. Do you think that Al-Qaeda is finished in this Mahala, or could they come back? No, no, come back, no, no, no return back, no return back. Finished? 100%? No. Maybe 90%, he said. And for the Sheikh, leading a Sunni militia paid by the Americans, it was bound to be dangerous work. Well, what happened to Sheikh Ali was that a couple of years after we spoke to him, he was murdered as he left the mosque here where he was imam uh, by people from Al-Qaeda. And the Sahwa or awakening forces were gradually ground down. And on the one side, they were attacked by Al-Qaeda extremists within their own community, the Sunni community. On the other hand, the government turned its back on them, paid off most of them and let them go, putting in their place uniformed police forces from outside the area to try and ensure security instead. But that link with the community had been broken. Today, the walls remain around mosques, police stations, and in a couple of other places. Elsewhere, they're gone. And critically, Iraq's Shiite-dominated government wanted the Sunni Sahwa militia to wither. Once several hundred in Dura, it's now a few dozen. We call in on the commander. When we met him in 2008, he predicted that the government would squeeze his forces, security would suffer, and can now say, I told you so. We were hoping that the Sahwa would have become the local police in its own neighbourhoods. This would have been the best solution. It would have exercised control. It would have controlled its areas. No incidents would have occurred. These days, Iraq is gearing up for elections. Prime Minister Maliki's pitch for re-election rests on security. Major General Abu Qatam, once commander in Dura, admits there are problems in provinces like Anbar. But he insists insurgency will not return to Baghdad. <laughs> No, the information we have is that people have started to look towards the elections and absolutely won't accept such acts. The state has begun to strengthen, and people also have more self-confidence after experiencing explosions and harm from al-Qaeda and criminals. But today, combat has broken out in western Iraqi cities like Fallujah. Groups linked to al-Qaeda battle the army there. In Baghdad, Sunni opposition is underground, but recent bombings have stoked public fear. It's felt in Dura, in places like the Central Kindergarten School. We filmed Leila Dawood Ibrahim, Mama Leila as the kids call her, back in times when pupils had to walk past bodies on the way to school. Things got better, but now she worries that not only will elections do nothing to help her community, but they'll trigger more violence. Security is the most important thing for people. In the period of security we did have, you saw for yourself that development took place. People felt safe and went out in the street. They went to work. Now, many are leaving their homes in dangerous areas. In Fallujah, they've left. I mean, people are afraid in our neighborhood. They don't know what's going to happen in the future. As the day's trading ends, Dura's famous market empties. To be guarded by the only member of the local Sahwa militia we saw in days here. The deserted market reminds us what things used to be like in darker times. Knowing the potential for violence of these people here, the way it's being policed, and the strong sense of kinship between people in Dura 
and those in the West, which is now in open revolt. I think they've been lucky not to have had more trouble already here. Already, Baghdad is facing a new wave of bombings and assassinations. As April's elections approach, the city's braced for the train of sectarian and political violence to gather pace. <laughs> 